Okay. Again, welcome to Live from My Drum Room, the Modern Drummer podcast. And it's a great pleasure to welcome my very good friend for many, many years, the one and only Chris Hart. There you are. All right. (laughs) Woo! (laughs) And welcome, Chris Hart, my old buddy. Oh, man. It's so good to see you. Oh, brother Jay, it's great. Thank you. Thank you so much for um, inviting me to the to the room, and you know, I you know how you and I are, and I, I'm one of your biggest fans, and oh, likewise, and you mean so you mean so much to me, and I it's just thank well, thank you. you. I, I'm 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 excited. I'm I'm sorry for the snafus we just <laughs> experienced, but I'm just happy to be be on with you and. Thank you, uh, audience, for your patience. And I, I'm, it's totally my fault. It's not. It's all on me on this one. No, we had a little audio thing getting connected, but it was, I, I knew we'd figure it out. And then just now, I, you know, live on the air, I was fumbling here trying, <laughs> trying to get it together. It's, so it's me. <laughs> it's me. Uh, you it's never awesome. have issues <laughs> yet when you invite me on now you start to have snafus it's me no i get not, it it's not you hey we got <laughs> we got so many of our friends watching we got mike ferris oh old buddy mike ferris <laughs> pat petrillo jean nadeau oh. all the way from montreal Oh, uh, you got the fan club. You got the chart fan club I, here. Oh man. And, and thanks guys. And whoever's watching and listening, I, I really appreciate you guys coming on board and just thank you guys. Oh my, my gosh. Mike Ferris, Mike Ferris. Yeah. You know, Mike Ferris doesn't even tune in when I have like Pearl endorsers on the show. So, <laughs> so I mean, that's huge, man. He's, he's too busy, you know? Yeah, he's a busy man. He's a busy he's, man. But Mike, thanks for watching. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> uh, oh man. Um, so you know, for, I, I think everybody watching this knows who you are. I got to think. You know, you're a popular man in the business. You've been uh, doing what you've been doing. But in, in case, just in case, there's anybody who doesn't know, and this is going to be a podcast, so there will be people listening that that may not know. But for anybody yeah. who doesn't know, Chris Hart is the director of artist relations. And public relations, correct? At I'm everything now. Everything. I, you know, everything. Even, <laughs> yeah. I'm, well, I'm yeah. everything. Even, you know, you know, we, we've been through some changes and titles and stuff, but I, you know, I'm maybe I should, I'm just a jack of all trades right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, well, I think, I think that happens when you've been with a company as long as you have, and you know, all these different parts of the business and a lot of companies went through a lot of changes the last two years. So they right. go to a senior guy like you and they, yeah. unfortunately or fortunately, they give you a lot of stuff to do, you know, and yeah. I, I totally get that. So I, I just appreciate that you answered my text when I asked you to be on the show. Oh. I, you're a busy guy. So thank you. Yeah, oh, stop, John. Man, I mean it. For you, you yes. know that. Well, thank you. Thank you. And Therese DiMuzio, by the way, is, is watching and she sends a big hug. So you got the whole, the whole gang is here, man. I, I'm honored. I, 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 you have no clue how excited I am oh. to be on the show. And people have been like texting me and ask and saying, Chris, are you going to tell stories? And I'm like, we ain't got time for all those stories. And stuff. <laughs> you know, I, you know, if, if John wants me to tell a, a story or two, I will. But it, this is not a storytelling show right now. <laughs> well, I, I'll tell you, I would love for you at some at some point during the show, I'd love to hear you tell may, maybe one of your favorite stories about a you know an artist, a, anything you want. That maybe even okay. a, Remo, yeah. a story about just, Remo himself. Just let cool. me know, and okay, and I tell maybe one or two or whatever. But great, that, yeah. That, this is not storytelling by John to Chris. <laughs> <laughs> So, so everybody watching knows that, that Chris is the man at Remo and, uh, and you've been there almost, it's like coming up on 30 years, right? Yeah. You know, 2022 is an interesting year for me, brother Jay. Um, August 10th, um, I'll be celebrating 30 years at Remo. Oh, okay. And then in September, in September, I'll be turning 60. 
Wow. <laughs> Man. I just, just how things worked out, I guess, you know. That's exciting. What a year. It's a big year. That's yeah, really yeah, it year. is kind of, huh? Wow. So when you turn 90, Woo! you will have been at Remo 60 years. See how quick <laughs> I did that math? Yeah, yeah. You're, you're a good mathematician. <laughs> so when I met you, so and for anybody who doesn't know this, because Chris and I love to tell our story, we met in 1985. Uh, yes, I sir. moved out to LA to work for Simmons, and I, I was working there. And I think you you came into work there not long after I started. I I don't remember. I started like in the late summertime, and I remember you you came in and yeah. Um, and I, I I like to think we became instant friends, instant fast friends, instant. Yeah. Instant, instant. And and to uh, add to that, Brother Jay, um, uh, it's, it's really amazing because what happened was, and I don't know if you remember this, but in 1985, PASIC was here in, in Southern California. It was at uh, Universal. Um, the Sheridan. Right? The Sheridan, yes. I remember, and, uh, yeah. I, it was my, that was literally my first PASIC that I went to. And I graduated, I just graduated from college. So my whole intentions was to go to PASIC and just pass out resumes. <laughs> look at drums, pass out resumes or whatever. And so uh, all of a sudden I, you know, out of all the resumes that I passed out, one called me and it was seven. Wow. So I'm like, oh, okay, cool. So, you know, it was uh, for distribution clerk. Yeah. So I, I, I applied for that and they hired me and, um, you know, then I got a chance to meet you and uh, all the, the cast of characters that we had worked with uh, from, uh, I think it was Day Levine and yeah, yeah. Chris Rallis and uh, wreak havoc wreak havoc yeah <laughs> yeah who so, yeah so I know. It, it, it was interesting but I, I i you know i i gotta i gotta say to your audience audience i admire this man oh. because i did something that i am truly grateful um, for he actually stood up and almost lost his job because he, he went to bat for me because he wanted me to have a promotion at Simmons. And, and, and Brother Jay, I would never forget that. I'm, I'm embedded to you and just thank you. I, that experience was like, you know, first real experience in, in, the, in the music biz. But you're a part of that and I, I'm wow. grateful for that. Oh, thank you, brother. I, I, I That's so kind of you to say that. I, I just... I remember, you know, I, I remember that time and, and meeting you. And I remember that you were fresh out of college and just really excited to be there, really enthusiastic, hard worker, just like today, all these years later, <laughs> no different. And, uh, and I, you know, I just, I, th that, that environment didn't, you know, I didn't stay that long. I stayed a little over a year and um, I'm not sure how long you stayed, but yeah, a lot of us. It was, ended up it was around there a little bit under you for sure. Yeah, yeah, and and uh, it, the nice thing is, like you said, you and me, and Chris Rollis and Reek Havoc and a couple other guys sort of stayed in the industry. Dave Levine stayed in the industry, and we'd see each other around. And then I remember, you know, it must have been just a few years later. I, I guess maybe by that time I was working at Zildjian. I saw you at a Nam show, or I saw you somewhere, and I, of course, you know, we remembered each other. And I'm like. <laughs> bro, you know, and you're like, there you were at Remo, you know, and there's that, that, that enthusiasm and yeah. you were right in it, man. You were right. Oh in it. man. You know, so, uh, I, I, I totally remember that as well, brother Jay. And, um, we, um, you know, is, is not, is, it's almost like, you know, no time has passed. We just, I know. And, you know, but you know, you, my friend, you're John to Christopher. <laughs> it's like everybody knows John to Christopher. Uh, everybody knows Chris Hart. Come on, everybody who's somebody knows Chris Hart. I'll tell uh, you. 
and and you are a hero around my house, especially for my granddaughter who loves ah. her pink drum heads. I'll just I gotta just say that she just yeah. I, I, you know I I know what I don't want to sound sexist, brother Jay. I was just hoping it was Andar, not for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you look good in blue. <laughs> Pink, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's not really my my color for drumheads. You know, I like yeah. the good old coated ambassadors and the there clear. There you go. You know. Yes, sir. Oh man, so. <laughs> So I know these last couple of years have really been a challenge and, and I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm just glad to see you and so many of our friends have made it through and, and uh, you know, I, I can only imagine now too, now that you're wearing all these different more hats, it's, it's just going to be an even more demanding job. Cause I'm, you gotta be, and I know you're leaving today. You're going to see our friend Ash Stone. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so you're like you so you're like off to a show tonight and yeah, it's yeah. the job of artist relations. Yeah, yeah. and it's you know, it's like I said, you know, far as like, you know, I you know, you know, we're working more as a team here at Remo and you know, my title has changed, you know, you know, slightly and stuff. And um, but I'm doing more things and you know, uh, trying to use some of the knowledge and relationships that I have to, you know, help the the company and all and stuff. And um, it's 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 uh, different times. It's um, interesting times. And and you know, I, I, you know, you know that old saying, brother Jay. Uh, sometimes change is good. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, I I I'm I'm getting there and stuff. You know, we got a good, you know, department, you know, I'm still, uh, so I'm not out of AR, so I'm just letting you know that, but, yeah. you know, we have like, uh, uh, you know, our old friend and he's still, he's back with us now, uh, Bruce Jacoby. Oh, I didn't know Bruce was back. Yeah, Bruce is, they, we finally oh. got Bruce back and of course we got Roger Johnson and all, so yeah. you know, we're, you know, we're all there and we're, we're all trying to, you know, do our you know, I stake to um, help Remo and maintain, a, you know, the professionalism and the quality of service and, you know, relationships with, you know, not only with artists, but, you know, our, the, the public as well. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. I mean, it's relationships are, are a huge part of it. And yes, and, and you're the face of that, you know, and, and, and that's a good I, thing. I, I hear that. I hear that. <laughs> Oh, but yeah, <laughs> no, you and but you know, I'm I'm not I'm being totally real about this, Chris. That's that's a really good thing for Remo, and I want I'm, I'm, we're going to talk about that too about Remo the company, but we'll talk about Remo the man who I know you're very close with. But I don't know if I ever told you this or if people know people watching know this, but I actually used to work in artist relations. I used to I used to dabble in it myself for a little while. So I I, I know what you're talking about. I it's. <laughs> I, you know, a little bit, a yeah, little bit, just just a little. I a little bit, yeah. And I, I people tell me I was not very good at it, so I, oh. I, I no, I, I, I stepped away, and that's oh. when I became a podcaster, and that's really what oh. my life's work has you, been. You know, you're, hey, brother Jay, you're 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 you're, you're setting the standards for many of us. Wow. Oh no, man, you're you're. I, but I don't know if I can do podcast. I, man, I get a, a mic setting straight on my computer let, let alone do what you did <laughs> oh no no it's <clears throat> it's it's one of those things what's the uh necessity is the mother of invention they say right so i yeah yeah i just yeah it's just you figure all this stuff out i know i still don't really know what i'm doing here as people saw <laughs> at the beginning i'm like going wait a minute i lost chris <laughs> where did chris go uh, Oh man, but I, you uh, know, I I would love to, um, I would love to to talk to you about Remo the man who I know you were very close with, and and I remember, um, I guess it would have been six years ago, two thousand sixteen, that we lost him. I think if that's yeah, I, right. I, I think we lost him before Vic. Oh, well, Vic was fifteen. That's, oh, so that's it was sure. after. I think it might yeah. have been, and well, I yeah. remember. You, I got a reverse. Yeah, yeah, and and uh, and and th those guys. Well, you know, we can talk about their relationship too. And mm -hmm. um, but I remember you came 
out to New York to the cutting room and you had a, a, a special day to remember Remo, you and Bob Yerby, and you guys did this incredible presentation. I mean, it was like, it was so moving. It was amazing. And, mm. and I, I just love to hear like how, how Remo influenced you as at, like at your job, because you know, he like Armin Zildjian and Vic, the founders of these companies, they were like, the Chris Hart's and the John De Christopher's, the artist relations guys before, and you know, before even Lenny was at Zildjian, you know, Armin was doing that job. And mm. so what kind of, what kind of, um, was there like advice that Remo gave you? Did you ever like go to him and say, I need your advice on something or. You know, um, my relationship with Remo, <clears throat> I, you this is like really strange. Um, when I started at Remo, I was um, I was a data entry clerk, and this is uh, we weren't in this building here. We were in the old Remo building on on uh, Raymer. Yeah, right North Hollywood. Yeah, in front of, um, tracks there and stuff. And um, we used to have like all the drummers. That this was this. This would be nice for the audience to know. Um, we used to have like these jam sessions at lunchtime. We literally like we, we get an hour for lunch, 30 minutes we'll eat, eat our lunch, and then um, 30 minutes we'll go, we'll go play. Um, and so at that time, Remo started establishing uh, was getting into like the world of percussion. Yeah. And so um I we had a few remote drum sets back, you know, back there and I could never get to it. It was like too late or whatever. So I start playing um, you know, the world percussion stuff. Remo used to come in, literally stand in the doorway, kind of bob his head and and uh move on and stuff. And then uh, maybe I think a year, year and a half later, Remo uh, called me into his office. Now, now, what's the crazy? No, no. Let let me back up a little. And I, I know I, I'm going to condense this story because I know we don't have much time. No, so, it's okay. So what happened was in the old building, it, there was this area where only one person, like if you're standing where you're at, and I'm standing where I'm at. There's a hall, there's literally like a single hall path. You have to let one person go before the other person can go. Two people could not walk on this pathway. Yeah. So I was about to go to lunch and uh, Remo is at the other end. <laughs> and, and, and so I'm like, I saw him like, um, come on through. And then Remo was like, no, you come here. I'm like, no, 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 no. You come and so we're doing this and Remo, brother Jay, brother Jay, Remo says, No, I need to speak to you. Uh, oh. And so I went up to him and he said, Well, were you about to go somewhere? I said, Well, I was about to go to lunch. And uh he said, uh, well, when you come back from lunch to my office and um I need to talk to you. And so I'm like, oh my gosh. So yeah. Brother Jay, <laughs> that was the worst lunch I ever had. I'll bet. <laughs> it was it was the worst lunch. You know, I I went to uh, I'm, I'm, I don't know what they call it on your end of the coast, but on our end of the coast, we have like this place called Carl's Jr. Oh, sure. Great burgers, man. Yeah. So I I got my, you know, I got like a chicken sandwich combo. Brother Jay, I took maybe one or two bites and I threw everything away. <laughs> so I go back, I go back into the, um, I go back to the office. I go directly to Remo's office. He's sitting there. He said, oh, come on in and close the door. Oh. <laughs> and you're thinking, oh, no. And, and so I'm like, oh, here we go. <laughs> and, and so um, I go in, close the door, and um. He then uh, proceeds to tell me, hey, you know, 
I can tell that you have some knowledge in world percussion as well. Uh, we're about to uh, start our world percussion line, and I need a guy to manage the world percussion line. And so I'm promoting you to the marketing department. You're going to be the marketing manager over world ethnic percussion for Rima. And, and, and Brother Jay, I, I, I don't know Rima. I don't know if he's kidding, if he's serious. And this is literally my first formal, you know, conversation with him. Yeah, guy. yeah. And yeah. so I'm, I'm looking at him like, wait, are you serious? He said, yes, I am. I'm serious. <laughs> yeah. Rimo and, didn't and, kid. My, my, yeah, my, my and you know, he doesn't really kid. And he I'm, didn't joke around much, no. <laughs> he's, he's not a jokester. <laughs> and, and so I'm like, wow, okay, so... That's when I got promoted to the marketing department and things, you know, start going and stuff. So that's when I start learning more. I, I'm sorry I went the long way around to answer no, the question. No, this is great. But, but the, uh, then I start getting more entangled with Remo, Remo Belly, or let's say Remo D. Belly, the person. Yeah. How he is and, the, you know, his actions and how he thinks. And and the one thing that I I tell people that what I learned so much from um, Remo, I I learned a lot. But the one thing that just really stands out, he is an incredible listener. And, and I it, it's like things that I don't think he hears in a conversation, mm -hmm. he hears and he'll repeat it. And I'm like, wait, you heard that? Wow. And, and <laughs> so. So that's that's the one thing. If anything about the man, you know, he, you know, he he's very knowledgeable. He's a, he has a very creative mind. He's he's many of the things that you probably heard about him. Yeah. One thing I don't think people know <clears throat> is like literally when you you literally having a conversation with Primo, and he's listening to every word that you say. That's huge. That's huge that he's, he's processing everything. Oh, yeah. he's processing it. And yeah. just like, wow. And, you know, and I'm like, for a man of your statue, like yeah. if I was in that statue, I'd be like blowing you off. And <laughs> no, you wouldn't. Yeah. Whatever, 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 whatever. <laughs> but, no. but, but for him, it was like, wow, he really listens. And I, I I really that's the one thing that I'm really most proud about that when I talk to people and, and stuff, you know, I became a very good listener because of him. That's great. That that's what a what a great thing to be able to say, you know, about yeah. about your boss. And I, I remember when you were doing the world percussion uh, marketing and you had I, I, you had that job for quite a long time right for a yeah. number of years I remember that mm -hmm. seeing you and that was at a time when that was like that was happening and and I know it's still happening but that was the beginning of it I know Remo made a huge push huge and that and that area invested a lot really grew that business yeah he, he, he yeah he did and 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 we you know brother Jay we took some lumps uh, we you know. We we were we experienced so much during that period of time, and um, but Remo Remo let me solve it, and I and I I thank him for it. He yeah. he he took he, he let me be who I am, and That's I easy. and I really appreciate it. Yeah, and you can be proud of that. You can be proud of being you know a part of that the business you know that that was yes. That, that grew and, and you developed. And, you know, I remember Mickey Hart coming down to Zildjian and, and us having a meeting with him when all that was happening. And he was, you know, just so excited about all the stuff you guys were doing with him. Like mm -hmm. he was so into it, so behind it. And Vic used to talk about it too. Vic, Vic would have these conversations with Remo. They'd, they probably talked on the phone, at, I'll bet every week at least. And, and, you know, they were like best friends and he, and Vic had so much respect for him. He'd say, well, you know, Remo says that this is going to be the next thing that's going to happen. And, um, and you know, I, I don't think he was wrong. I don't, I, you know, right. it wasn't seldom that did, did Remo really stick his neck out and have it not be a success, you know? 
he 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 has a knack for that. Yeah, yeah. The proof is there. Exactly. The proof is there. Yes, yeah. sir. So, so, and and in the course of that time, obviously, you got to, you know, that was so you went from the from the first job, the data entry job, to marketing for World Percussion. So that was the beginning of your interaction with all these artists. That's that. Oh my gosh, it yeah. was it was like a, a snowball going downhill, brother Jay, and that and I. Actually, that's when I reconnected with you because that's when yeah. I, you know, really start going to NAM a lot, you know, right. and, and, and the other um, events we have in our industry and stuff. So I, I did the mark. I did that. And um, um, then, you know, I went on to um, become the marketing promotions manager. Now, the, the marketing promotions manager was... Uh, really interesting because um even though i you know i know the percussion side of things i know drums as well and my identity was more on the world percussion end and so now i was getting being able to like oh wait wait guys i do know drum set as well i do know drums yeah, yeah. so i got more involved with you know percussion on the drum set side of things after after that, you know, uh, stint with uh, the marketing and, uh, well, the, being the marketing manager of World Ethnic Percussion and stuff. Yeah. So, and did you start off as a as a drum set player, Chris? Is that how you? Yeah, I yeah, did. I, I okay. Yeah, I, I started off as a drum set player, but you know, when I look at my past, brother Jay, um, I was that kid that just wanted to play drums. I didn't even think of it as you know, make it living out of it. Yeah. I, you know, I just, you know, two sticks, give me two sticks. I'm good to go. And, and so <laughs> I, you know, I, I never thought of it. Like, you know, most people that I, I, I knew in the, in the past, you know, everybody was like, Oh, you know, I'm going to, you know, become, you know, um, John Bonham or, you know, whoever, whoever yeah. and stuff. But I, I never thought of it in that sense. I just like playing drums. You know, I, I, and and I didn't care what kind of drum it is. That was my thing. It's just, I want to play drums. Now, you know, once I was getting older and stuff, and I started, you know, just like you and all of our cohorts and stuff, we all wanted to play in bands. I played in millions of bands and stuff. And, you know, I, I did my run with that and stuff. And, you know, but, you know, I, somehow I think like when I was in my, I don't know, probably in my 20s, early to mid 20s, you know, um, I just said, you know, if I don't make it as a drummer or whatever, I, I want to be at least in the business. And, and, and so uh, the only, you know, my mom and dad, and more so my mom. Um, all they cared about was you you're going to do something. You're not gonna just yeah. you know, sit around or whatever. And uh and my dad wouldn't let me anyways, whatever. So <laughs> so but it was it was just um trying to figure out what I wanted to do and you know um I had a plan A, I had a plan B and and I just did it. I have. Yeah. Yeah. Here I, I am. I think it all, you know what? I, I honestly, I, 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 I can relate so much to what you're saying, Chris, similar path like you. I, when I met you out in LA, I, I'd moved out there cause I wanted to pursue playing the drums, but I, I'm a couple years older than you. So mm -hmm. by the time, you know, end of 1985, I'm 25 and the, the, you know, the whole playing in a band thing isn't, panning out the way that I thought it would no mm -hmm. surprise you know I wasn't the only one with that idea out in LA you know and <laughs> and, and and like you said you know things I, I started thinking more about the business side of it and the industry and uh and you you know you I, I honestly I, I recognize that in you 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 are a very I've told you this before too I you know when we worked together at Simmons I just you were you wanted to learn about everything you had questions and you know you weren't obviously just a guy coming in there a drummer by, you know, a guy just working a day job 
to support your drum habit. You really were enthusiastic about like learning and and growing. And so I'm not surprised that uh, by that time. You. Yeah, thank absolutely. You, yeah. And and and, and 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 brother Jay, like right now, I'm just, you know, I, I'm looking at things like close to 30 years later, and and I'm just I'm 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 a very thankful man. And I you know, I, I have met so many people and young and old and I met I met my heroes. I you know it it and it, it, it's just it's just odd like when I speak to my old friends and they um you know they might have we'll, we'll talk about like you know uh you know, old records and stuff like that. And, you know, I'm just like, oh, yeah, I he told me about that. And and they're like, wait, what? <laughs> you know, it, it's stuff. Like, I, I have this uh, one friend, uh, his name is Henry Alexander. And uh, I had asked, um, like, what our, one of our favorite songs is uh, What is Hip? Oh. Power yeah. of Power. Yeah, come on. Great song, right? <clears throat> so so I um and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say if it was a mistake or not, but I think one of the greatest bass drum solos is in that song. It is uh I, let me see, let me try to set it up. Um I think it's the bridge is da 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 yeah 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 i always thought that was just garibaldi being hip just the hip guy yeah and and so i you know i spoke to garibaldi about that and stuff and he just like chris is just it just happened and stuff yeah yeah my friend here is like no that's a mistake that's a mistake (laughs) like all right we're 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 done i'm telling you what is good (laughs) <laughs> he just said, "No, man, it's what is hip." That's it's that what was, is hip. What was what, what was hip? Yeah. Yeah. It, no, it, I it, I know. Yeah, I know. It's a, it's it, a it, cool thing. The, 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 I mean, to me, we we all we get a kick like, boom, one note. Yeah. It, yeah. It, it, it fits. I know. It's, See, that's what oh. being a drummer too. See, that's so cool that you know. Again, you you come from that world of you're a drummer first. So you hear all these things and you can then talk to David Garibaldi, who was just like, come on. Yes. Right. I mean, the whole world just does that. Yeah, yeah. To David, And you're just going, come on, David, come on, man. Was that a mistake or what? Was he's that going, a mistake or what? <laughs> I know. I know. And he's, he's, he's so cool that, you know, because you have that friendship with him, you could see somebody else walking up to him. He could get a little miffed and go, what are you talking about? You know, like, but, yeah, it, yeah. But, it, but Dave, but brother Jay, Dave doesn't talk to me. I know I'm going to get ripped on this one. He doesn't talk to me much because he he's a San Francisco Giants fan. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was thinking when I when I was when I was trying to lighten the moment when we couldn't get the microphone to work. I was going to say to you, I bet I know you hope. I, I bet I I bet I know who you hope wins the next. Oh, you already yeah. know, brother Jay. I know. Yeah, you, you already know. I know you're and, voting for Golden and, State, baby. Oh, oh, and, and, and let me tell you, I am vocal about that. I know you are. There and is I love no anyway. way. There's no way I can let your Celtics take over my Los Angeles Lakers. I'm I'm the same way. I I know if if the Lakers were playing. The Sixers, I'd be voting for the Sixers. I'd be going, no. Absolutely. You, you probably go to the freaking Philly home game just to see the <laughs> Lakers get beat or something. There's no way. There you, knew no- it, uh, you knew it had to go here. You knew it had to go oh, here at some point. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and, I, and, and Brother Jay, I, and this is when we talk about, like, relationships and stuff. And, and, and someone had asked me about, do you have, like, you know, what is the best relationships that you have? I said, you know, my people, I, I, I got great relationships everywhere. I mean, at least I think so. The, the most fun I have is definitely with the, my Boston people. I, I, it's like, yeah. 
<laughs> this this thing with us and you know the Lakers and the Celtics and you guys just don't understand. And then I get grief like uh, <laughs> Lee. Uh, there's a guy here. I don't know if you know Leon Mobley. Oh yeah, sure. Yeah, so, from from Boston originally. Yeah. Yeah, he's from Roxbury. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and so yeah. you know, I I get on his case, and you know, I I get on, and I oh my gosh. Don't let me even start with Neil Larrabee. Oh yeah, well, well you, you know, had to you had to jump in one time on on that one and stuff. Yeah, exactly. Well, and, I remember and, when, when when Rick Drum uh, worked for Remo. I I met him when you and I met when we were working at Simmons. I met Rick. He was working at Remo, and I remember it, us being comrades. You know, immediately because he's a Celtics fan. And it was like in the in the eighties and the heyday of all that stuff. And he he'd call me. You know, when we got to know each other, he'd. He, you know, that voice Rick Drum has, he'd go like, yeah. I'd hear his voice in the other, John, <laughs> what happened last night? Have they ever heard about playing defense? I mean, <laughs> geez, but, you know, and we, we get into this, like, you know, whole, and you know, analyzing the whole game, oh. you know, like, yeah, it was so funny. By the oh, way, Jeff man. Hamilton, Jeff Hamilton is watching oh, right oh. now. I know, I know. Talk about he, wait, legend. You said he's on? He's watching, yep. He's watching. Hammer, I don't like it. I hope you see my face right now. I don't like you. You keep talking about my Lakers. I don't like you. <laughs> oh, man. Oh. You know, I I, <laughs> I got to jump back. We could keep talking about all this, all, this stuff yeah. all day. Um, when you were talking about, um, he says, same to you. Jeff says, same <laughs> to you. <laughs> he is such a funny, funny dude, yeah. man. Um but when you were talking about, um, you know, like listening to records of, of uh, you know, legends and people that you knew. And, and I was thinking before we went on the air today, I was just thinking about the mutual friends that we have that are not here anymore. I mean, I think about the relationship that like Louis Belson had with with Remo Belly, the man, Remo, the company with you personally. And uh, and I was just thinking, if only to say how lucky you and I both are to have like been alive at the time that Louis Belson walked this earth and, you know, we could see him and have dinner with him and go see him perform and talk to him on the phone. And just, uh, you know, a man that was just one of the most incredible humans, let alone his, his drumming, you know, just, just incredible. I'm going to, I'm going to tell you two quick stories right quick. Yeah, yeah, please. Yeah. Here's, here's the first one. My first week at Remo, I, I didn't know anyone. So um, I go into the lunchroom and I sit down and there was hardly no one there. The gentleman walks into the, to the lunchroom and he says, uh, you know, and it, it's empty. It was probably like maybe three of us in the lunchroom. It was pretty large lunchroom. So this gentleman walks into the lunchroom and he says, uh, can I have lunch with you? And I looked up, it's Louis Belson. <laughs> <laughs> it, now, now, Brother Jay, I'm looking at him. I'm like, Are you kidding me? Of course, sit down, <laughs> sit down. So he, oh. he, you know, so Louis sits down and, you know, and he had like his lunch bag and stuff. So he, you know, he's pulling out his food and him and I were talking and eating. It's like, oh, it's your first time. I'm like, yeah, I just started this week, Mr. Belson. And, 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 and Louis said, no, just call me Louis. Just kind of like, okay, Louis is coming. Oh. So we're talking and we're eating and, you know, time goes on and we're now we're laughing like we're old buddies and stuff. And so brother Jay, check this out. Oh, that's so So, good. Louis goes into his bag and he pulls out like this aluminum foil. The aluminum foil, I don't know if you can see it, it's like a rectangle, mm -hmm. something like this and stuff. So I see him pull out this aluminum foil. So he's unraveling the um the aluminum foil. And it, you know, I'm like, oh, he's about to have some dessert and stuff. So we're talking and talking and stuff. And so then when he finished unraveling the aluminum foil, it's a piece of cake. 
So Louis says, uh, Chris, we like a piece of cake. I said, no, Louis, I, I don't need a piece of cake. He's like, no, 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 really. I I want you to have a piece of cake. And I'm like, no, that's, that's okay. <laughs> I love and, it. And so we're going back and forth. He's like, no, really, Chris, just I insist. That's the Italian oh, in him, by okay. the way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and so I said, okay, all right. So he cuts me off a of, brother Jay, he cuts me off a piece of cake. He gives me the piece of cake and I ate it. So I'm tasting it and stuff. And so Louis says, um, do you know what kind of cake that is? I'm like, no, I I really don't know. And then Louis says, Oh, this is what we call a friendship cake. Now that you had a piece of my cake, we're friends. Oh, man, that's so beautiful. <laughs> that's so beautiful. Wow. Uh, and it sounds exactly like him, you know? And I, so, I just, yeah. And I'm like, I'm sitting there like, you got to be kidding me. Louis, <laughs> I, I mean, I, so I was. Yeah. I, oh. can I, I have to tell you a quick, just a quick Louis story. No, go ahead. Too. So. Louis was, when, when my kids were little, my son was probably, I'm going to say he was maybe six or seven, about the same age as my granddaughter now, in fact, his daughter. And my daughter was, if he was six or seven, she was four or five, say. And they, Louis was doing a clinic at the Senzo's uh, drum shop out here oh. in, in Massachusetts, out in Boston. And it was, a, it was in the wintertime. It was actually at a high school. I brought my kids. It was a Sunday night. And... Um, I brought my kids because I was taking them after being with me for the weekend. I was going to take them back home. Um, so anyway, we, we, I talked to Louie ahead of time and said, I'm going to be coming, uh, you know, whatever. And my son, who still to this day at age 35 now loves to draw pictures, drew this like dog or something like he drew like a, uh, like a, a dog or a wolf or something in the woods with the full moon and whatever. So he said, I want to give this to Louie Belson tonight at the clinic. So mm. I, I think he said that, or he, he just, he just used to like to draw things. So anyway, um, during the clinic, Louis says, it's the question and answer point. And my son raises his hand. I didn't know he was going to do this. And he said, I have something for you. We had seen him before the clinic. I guess we had talked to him. This is gosh, I don't, you know, 30 years ago, but anyway, um, he goes up and he hands Louis the picture and Louis holds it up and he introduces my son. He said, this is John's son. And he, hold, you know, and he shows it to everybody and he says, thank you. And he chats with them. I'm going to say, Chris, it was maybe two years later, three years later. I, I talked to Louie all the time. But anyway, he'd always ask how my son was doing. And he said, you know, that picture he made for me, I, I have it in my suitcase everywhere I go. I take it everywhere I go. And one particular year, he was playing at the Modern Drummer Festival. And it was several years later. And I went up to his room I think I, I was going up to bring him something and we were going to have dinner later. And I said, I'll, I'll drop by your room, Louie. And I, while I'm in there, Francine's there too. And he said, oh, John, you know, that voice, that really calming voice he had. He said, yes. oh, yes. John, oh, wait a minute. Hold on. I, I want to show you something. Reaches and, uh, you know, shows me the picture that my son had made. Like at that wow. point, six or seven years before, I'm like, oh my and God. And he still had. He's, yeah, yeah. Oh my God! I know. I, know. I, I just uh, uh, amazing. Just uh, he, he's amazing. amazing. And, 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 and before I forget, let me tell this one, the second quick story about. I yeah, got please, please. Tons of Louis stories, but here's here's a, here's a second one. Um, so brother Jay, I was at um, I was at the Montreux Jazz Fest in in uh, Switzerland. Yeah, yeah. And um, um, uh, so I'm hanging out. And I went to this stage. Now, this stage is like literally like near the water and stuff. And uh, I'm waiting. I'm listening to this one band, but I'm waiting for the next act and stuff. And um, someone comes and taps me on the shoulder from behind. Turn around. It's Louie. <laughs> and I'm like, wait, look, what are you doing here? Oh, uh, Chris, um, I'm sitting there with this big band um, tomorrow, but I'm just walking around, just checking out the acts and stuff. Oh, okay. And so we continue to talk and stuff. Now we're standing on sand and um, 
I'm tapping, I'm tapping my my feet onto the sand and I'm making like these swishing sounds, like how you take brushes and you do the swipes and stuff yeah. like that. And um Louis is standing right next to me and he's hearing it. And and so the band, the band that was on stage finally stopped and stuff. And um I'm just playing along with the sand and stuff. And and so Louis says, you know, I used to tap dance. And I'm like, wait, you what? So yeah. And so <laughs> Louis started doing the soft shoe in the sand. Oh my gosh. Where I was, where I was uh where we were standing. People, I, I kid you not, it was like they saw a rock star. People start coming from in droves and they circled us and stuff. And these cameras, uh, TV cameras start coming and they're like filming Louis doing a soft shoe in the sand. And so Louis did the big ending, ta da! <laughs> and, and the crowd goes wild. Brother Jay, the crowd goes wild and stuff. So this one. TV reporter uh, rushes Louis says, "Mr. Belson, Mr. Belson, um, can we do? Can we? Can, can I do a live interview with you?" And um, he said, uh, "Sure, of course." So I'm like, "Okay, they're getting set up and stuff." So Brother Jay, I start walking away. Louis grabs my arm, is like, "No, Chris, I really want you to stand next to me." Oh man. <laughs> and I'm like, wait, they don't need to see me. They need to see you. Uh, and, uh, bro, so they, we did the interview and I'm just standing there. And so the TV reporter says, um, and sir, <laughs> what is your name? I'm like, oh, I'm Chris Hart from Remo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Louis. <laughs> But that's Louie, man. He's he, yeah, yeah, all about I know. Louis and stuff. So. Oh, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Well, you know, Jeff Hamilton wouldn't have done that. He he no. would have just you know he <laughs> brushed it off and stuff. Yeah. Speaking of brushes, I, I hear Jeff plays a little bit of brushes. Oh yeah. man. He yeah, no, he liked to brush off people. He doesn't really... <laughs> uh Jeff, I'm gonna be reaching out to you, my friend. Your your number has come up to be on the show. <laughs> so you can run, but you can't hide. Yeah. Mr. Jeffy, yeah. Mr. Hammer. Um, I, I, so, oh, go ahead. Oh, no, go ahead. I'm sorry. I, I was just going to say, so I, I'd, I'd love to just continue what you were just talking about where you were, you were at Montreux. And for so people understand part of what your job, I mean, I know this, but I think people would, oh. would appreciate like how involved your job is when it comes to these huge festivals like, um, well, like Montreux, like Jazz Fest, like, uh, you know, PASIC, which is its its own sort of big, yeah, you know, we, it, it's small compared to Montreux, but it's a, it's a big drum event. So, so you're, I mean, you're like providing backline support basically mm -hmm. to all the backline artists. Backline support. Yeah. yeah. We're, you know, some of the, you know, a, a lot of your, at least we try with a lot of the major festivals and stuff especially with the, all the jazz ones uh, we try to be like the sponsors of, and, you know, and, and, and it's, it's a win-win because the majority of the artists are like Rebo guys and stuff. And we try to provide drum heads. And, and then, you know, a lot of the festivals is like coming at us like, Hey, can we make deal, you know, make a deal with you? Because, you know, we look at all the writers and, you know, they're asking for, Remo drum heads and, and stuff like that. So it's a win-win. So like you know, something like Montro, um, another major one, we're, we're no longer the sponsor, but, you know, we were for many years, uh, the North Sea Jazz Fest. Oh, of course. Yeah. 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 We, you know, we, you know, <clears throat> we were sponsoring that for a long time as well. And it goes on and like, we get like domestically here and stuff um, like the, the Monterey Jazz Fest in Monterey, California. Yeah. Um, do you the, do New, Newport Jazz too? We don't do Newport. We, you know, that's that's something. You know, I know. You know, a few people have asked me about, but 
No, I, you know, we yeah. don't unfortunately do that one, but there's one, yeah. uh, well, it, <clears throat> excuse me. It used to be called the, um, the Playboy Jazz Fest, but, oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but now they changed names and now it's the um, Hollywood Bowl Jazz Fest. So, you know, we're, you know, we're a sponsor of that and a few other ones. And yeah. So and we're, they, you know, we, 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 we try to spread our wings as much as we can yeah. to try to provide, you know, service for artists and, and companies. And you're, you're, you're running like crazy at these shows, right? I mean, I've, yeah, I've seen you in action. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, it's tough. Yeah. It's a, it's a lot of work. But, uh, it's a, someone got to do it. I know somebody's got to do it. You know, it just, that's just for anybody who thinks it's all, you it, know, it's not easy. That's you know, sure. with, with rock stars and jazz greats like Jeff Hamilton, it's, <laughs> it's just, it's not all like that. It's a lot of hard work. Actually, it's hard work hanging out with Jeff Hamilton. Actually. Yeah. It's just hard work hanging out with that guy. You know? I've had many hard dinners with Jeff where my arm was so sore at the end of the night from lifting up that wine glass. Oh. I, I had to ice it down when I got back to my hotel room afterwards. So, uh, Hey, now, Brother Jay, I, I think it was uh, maybe two or three weeks ago, uh, Chris Stanky, uh, Chris Stanky, the director of arts relations for uh, Sabian. Yes, a good and, man. Uh, Very good and, man. Uh, his love, his lovely fiance, Jules Thomas. Uh, they invited me. I, I guess they had a you know a little event. Well, they had a, a little event at um, their home and stuff. So uh, I, you know, me and Gabriel Lawrence, we went over to hang out and stuff. And I, I did it because uh, Chris told me that Jeff Hamilton was going to be there, and Gabriel Lawrence wanted to see you know, uh, Jeff. So <clears throat> we went over, hung out, and sure enough, Jeff came. And um, between Jeff Hamilton and Andy Zildjian, they gave me the most grief out of all the people <laughs> I know, man. It, 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 you know, it was like they were tag teaming me. Oh, yeah. You know, I, I get hit from the left from Andy. I get hit from the right from Jeff. And then they went all night on me, bro. Andy can be brutal. And, all right, next time they, I'm oh, going to be brutal. there. I'm going to be there. I'm going to be there to 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 support, to back you I, up. I I I need it because those two were like, you know, the dynamic duo. <laughs> They're going at me, and this is after one or two glasses of wine. <laughs> <laughs> I bet it was good wine though. If Jeff oh, was, it was there, good wine. it was good wine. It was, yeah, it was. It was yeah, he doesn't mess around with that stuff. Yeah, Andy and. Andy and Jeff just went at me and stuff. So especially Jeff. Yeah. Hey, I gotta um as we're as we're getting uh as we're getting close to the end here, I gotta just tell you, Eggy Castrillo is watching. And uh, <laughs> our our brother from right here in Boston, and he's asking me to ask you, ask Chris about the party at my home with Giovanni Hidalgo, Horacio, and Victor Mendoza. Must have been after one of the Berkeley Percussion Weeks, I'm guessing. Some yeah, some years I, ago. Uh, years ago, we used to. <clears throat> excuse me. Years ago, we uh, Remo used to sponsor. Uh, Remo used to sponsor um, Percussion Week. Percussion Festival. That's yeah, what. Yeah. It was. So. Yeah, I um, yeah. And Aggie had um and and everybody was hanging out there and you know like you said Giovanni and. Horacio and Walfredo Reyes Sr. Oh man. Uh, yeah. he was there and stuff. So so I guess Eggie said, you know what? I'm gonna have a little thing at my house. I want everybody to come. So we, you know, we went to um uh, we went to hang out at uh Eggie's house, and it was the it was the party of parties, brother. <laughs> I can only imagine what those Jesus. guys, man. Oh you, my gosh. I, I, it's just like, oh my gosh, you guys are killing. And but you we, had to work the next day. Right? I'm in. Yeah. That, what those guys don't realize is like, you know, you're, you go back to your hotel. I'm right. And the next day you got to get up at whatever time and be there for the clinic and yeah, set the stuff they don't, up. They don't care. They don't care. Yeah. They, yeah, don't, they don't care. I know. I know. No. Uh, see, again, folks watching at home, this is the stuff that, <laughs> 
you know, as I mentioned earlier, Chris might remember, I used to work in artist relations. A little bit. <laughs> I dabbled a little bit. And I remember well, those. A lot. Uh, <laughs> but I remember those hangs where like, you're going, man, why did I, why did I why? do that? Why did I? Why? You know, I know. I know. Oh, man. Oh, and Eggy's saying the Chinese restaurant. I can only imagine. It sounds like uh, it was a. It, it, yeah. yeah. My ties. I, and, I tell you later, it's about a dog. Oh, <laughs> all right we'll see we'll save that when we're off yeah, well, yeah. Right. <laughs> it's, it's about oh, a dog man. it's oh, man. brother jay is classic though but it's about a dog <laughs> oh man it, well, and, and you know it, 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 I, I gotta squeeze this one in too because i know yeah please uh, yeah um dean anderson remember dean i sure do yeah absolutely I, I, yes so dean was um when I talk about my, my Boston foes, like yeah. you, others, Dean was notorious on me, bro. Dean used to like kill me majorly and stuff. So I'm going to make this real short. So when Dean retired, when Dean retired. Uh, Dean was the chair of percussion at Berkeley, everybody, if you don't yes, know uh, yeah, who Dean yes. was. Yep. No, that's okay. Yep. So, okay. So, so when Dean retired, I, uh, they were, uh, uh, we were asked to um, to do a presentation, and so it was Pearl. It was you guys. That, well, when you were at Zildjian, yep. and it was Nemo. So we all had our we all had our nights. There was a Pearl night, Zildjian night, Remo night. I think uh, they stuck me in the middle between Pearl and Zildjian. So during the day of our our evening and stuff. Um, during the day, um, I see Dean, and Dean is just, you know, regular casual clothes and stuff, and we talked and blah, blah, yeah. blah, and everything, Brother Jay, everything is fine and dandy. We get to the evening of the of the presentation and all. And um I see Dean, and Dean is in this tan suit. I'm like, bro, you you dress well and stuff. I'm like, oh, this is great. Yeah. So I'm I'm brother Jay ain't thinking nothing of it and stuff. So the the presentation goes on, and then um, they bring Dean out, and uh, then they brought me out, and now I have like this plaque that. Remo made you know for for Dean. And so uh Dean, before I go to the podium, Dean says, wait, everyone, I want everyone to know that Chris Hart from Remo is from Los Angeles, California. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. And oh. and and I'm like Oh, no, I know what's coming. And oh. so Dean says, wait. So he pulls off his blade. He unbuttons his shirt and he pulls, he stretches it out. And, and on, on the shirt, it says, beat LA. Wow. And the crowd, no, no, bro, they, the crowd goes ballistic. So Dean is hops back on the, on the, um, on the mic, he says, let's give Chris Hart some good old Boston lore and stuff. He, oh. he starts this chant, beat LA, beat LA. And I'm just standing there like a nutcase, like, really? you're going to do this and I have no comeback? <laughs> wow. And you were giving him a plaque, too. And I'm I mean, giving him a plaque. And you're honoring him. Not to mention yes. Him. All the dinners you bought him over the years and all the drum heads and hey, hey brother Jake, you see how ungrateful people are at times? I do. I do. You know, I gotta say, I'm not one of those sports fans that that's takes it to that level, but people out here are nuts with this stuff. Yeah. They well, are. we're 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 a little nuts on the left coast too. I will I'll tell you I'll tell you a quick funny story. I told this when Chad Smith was on with me a couple weeks ago or a few weeks ago. Um the Chili Peppers played at the Boston Garden. This would have been in the 90s. 
And uh, even though Chad's a Sabian guy, he invited me, you know, we were friends. So I came to the show and um, at the end of the night, they done, they just finished like playing their, their encore and they were finally done for the night and they're all standing up front and flea the bass player with the chili peppers, you know, comes up to the mic and he look, he's looking up at the ceiling and there's all the championship banners hanging. You know, at that point there were 16 hanging and he says, uh, you know, I've been wanting to say this for a long time. And I'm just like watching him. He goes, he goes, Celtics suck. Celtics suck. Lakers rule. Lakers rule. And the crowd had been like giving him a standing ovation up till then. And then they just like, boo, you suck. You suck. It was like, they just turned, you know, it was like, uh, I bet and, it did. Yeah. 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 And Brother Jake, because oh. Lee is a huge Lake. Big huge. time. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, well, uh, brother Chris, I won't keep you too much longer. I, I know you, no. you got a, a busy rest of your day and you're going to see I, Ash. I, I, I'm fine and, and stuff. And I know there's, I know there's other topics that, you know, you wanted to talk about and I'm so sorry that I went on this. No, and, no and way, and man. Stuff. No, this is, we had, we had no agenda. I just wanted yeah, to. Yeah. And we, and brother Jay, people are texting me like, I, I, I don't, I'm sorry for repeating myself, but. Tell stories, Chris. I want to hear stories. I'm like, that's all on John to Christopher. I have he controls everything. I well, I'm just <laughs> I would love to hear another story. If you if you if there's one, you know, when people ask me like to it's I feel like I'm on the spot sometimes, you know what I mean? To come up with something, I'll be like, somebody say, Tell a story about Armand or something, or and I'm like, Oh, geez, well what which ones can I tell? <laughs> first right. of all right. and then you know it's it's funny like there's there's like when you're like but if but if there's if there's a story you want to tell about one of one of our drummer friends i know you were like really close to indugu um yeah you know, i just I, I know that was a I, tough I, one I, I, I i'm trying to think of one you, you know i here's one because i know we're running out of time it is only because um I just heard this, you know, uh, a Beatles song a couple uh, hours ago that I'm still like it's ringing in my head. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so check this out, brother Jay. There was um, we have Grant. At least here in LA, we have this thing called Grammy Week. Yeah. And so, um, a lot of the rehearsals for the Grammys is at center staging. Yeah. So I, you know, I go there one week. And um, on one day, I'm sorry. And I, you know, I always, you know, I have this thing where I go in the drum department, talk to the guys, make sure everything's okay and stuff. And, and believe it or not, audience, this is a true story. <laughs> I know it's going to be hard to believe, but it's, it's a true story. So I, I, I leave out the back door of um, center staging and there's just a crowd of people just all loud in the pathway and stuff. And there was one that was near the door and I literally, I couldn't open the door. It was so many people and stuff. So they, you know, they let me out and stuff. And so um, I'm looking and I, I'm looking for like Johnny Lord. Now Johnny Lord, for those who might not know, is like an integral part you know i call him one of the he he is center staging you yeah, know in my yeah. eyes and stuff me too so yeah. i'm i'm looking for johnny lord and i'm like oh i see him in the, in the distance so I, I walk over to johnny lord and he's talking to a lobario jr so <clears throat> i you know i you know gave you know i i loved up johnny lord i loved up abe so the three of us is talking Probably 10 minutes later, this guy comes and he says, Craig, Craig. And I'm looking at him and he's looking at me like, Craig, Craig. And I'm looking at him like, no, you're close. It's Chris. And he's like, ah, Chris. So it's, it's Paul McCartney. Oh, my God. I was going to say, did he have an English <laughs> accent? Oh, and, my God. And, and, and so now John Lord and oh, Ava Mario Jr., they're looking at each other like, wait, you know Paul McCartney? And, and, and so Paul's like, man, Chris, I haven't seen you in so many years. How you been? And they're like, 
oh man, I'm, I'm fine. And, you know, and we're, you know, we're talking and stuff. And, you know, he, he said, man, well, I saw you walking out the door. I'm doing all these interviews here, but I, I recognize, you know, like, I just wanted to come by and say hi to you. Uh, is everything okay? I'm like, yeah, I'm still at Remo, still doing my thing. Everything is fine and stuff. And so Johnny and Abe are like, just like, <laughs> what in the world is going on here and stuff? He oh. said, and so, so then, so then uh, Paul says, are you, are you going, are you going to go to the Grammys tomorrow? I'm like, yeah, I'm, I, uh, I'll, I'll be there. He said, okay, well, hopefully I see you then. I was like, okay, I look forward to that. Said, okay, take care, Chris. Let me get back. Let me answer some more questions and stuff. So Paul McCartney leaves. <laughs> he goes back to answer questions. Abe, Abe and Johnny are like, what just happened? I'm like, <laughs> I, I, I can't really tell you. <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I can't. Tell. And Abe is like, Chris, how he actually almost remembered your name. Like, yeah, that's that's amazing. So you had met him crazy. years before and he remembered I, you. I, yes. It that's... gets it gets worse. So I finish up everything at center staging. I go back to the office. So uh, at that time, the team was me, Matt Connors, and uh, Michelle Torres. Oh, sure, yeah. <clears throat> So, so I'm telling the story to Matt and Michelle about, you know, what just happened at Center Stage. Now, Brother Jay, I can understand them saying, yeah, sure, that happened. And, but believe me, <laughs> they believe me. I said, <laughs> yeah. No, I, this, it, it you, had wit you had witnesses, though. You I had, I had witnesses. Yes, yep. sir. And Johnny so, Ward, yeah. So, so, uh, Matt, I don't know what happened to Matt. Matt couldn't make uh, the show. So I asked Michelle, I said, Michelle, you know, if you want to go to the Grammy Awards, you could come along with me, since Matt is not going. And Mich Michelle said, sure, I would love to go. Next day comes. We're, at the, we're backstage at the Grammy Awards. We're backstage. And I see another crowd. And, and I kind of looked, and I saw the top of the head, and I saw it was Paul. I kept walking. A couple minutes later, the guy's running like, Chris, you made it. You made it. And I look, it is Paul McCartney. <laughs> and, so, and so Paul gives me this hug. Now, Michelle, if it is, I know a lot of people don't know. Michelle is standing there stunned. She's hyperventilating. She's like, I can't believe this is happening and stuff. Uh, and, and so, so I look at Paul. I said, hey, Paul, hold on one sec. Paul, I need you to meet my co-worker, Michelle Torres. Michelle Torres, this is Paul McCartney. <laughs> and so Paul says, oh, hi, Michelle. I wrote a song about you. <laughs> Michelle, Michelle oh. is standing. I thought she was gonna faint. I, Brother Jay, I thought she was gonna faint. Oh my god! Oh, <sighs> see, this is what I'm talking about. About you, this is the effect <laughs> you have on people. I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm telling you. And, and, and so, so Paul said, "Man, Chris, it was so great seeing you yesterday, man. Thank you for everything and, and stuff." And and it, so, let me get back. I I saw you walking. And stuff, but I just wanted to say hi again and stuff. He's like, no, Paul, do your thing. You know, we'll catch up later. And so that's that. that wow. was <laughs> he said, I saw you standing there. <laughs> oh, my. Chris, I'm so glad you told that story. I'm so glad I didn't let you go without, you, you know, uh, and you, you were able to yeah, tell that story. It, it, that's I, I, awesome. I tell, and so uh, I saw, like, Paul, uh, Paul did, um, we have a new stadium here, here called SoFi Stadium, yeah. and uh, Paul Paul played there and stuff. And so Michelle actually went and saw the show, and she had texted me and says, "Chris, I still think about the time that I <laughs> like 
I bet you did. <laughs> what a great story, man. I, that, I, I love that. That is so great. Yeah, and it, so. It, it just, it just confirms what I was saying and what everybody already knows about. Nah. Just have to meet you one time. And that's, man, I, I, we're not going that far. Friends of Jay. I'm still trying to get on John the Christopher status. Oh, uh, come on. No. <laughs> Oh, uh, well, brother, this has been such a thrill and an honor to have you today. And, to, uh, and thank to you. Catch up. Thank you so much. And again, I, you know, I, um, I, I can't, I can't begin to tell you how much this is an honor to uh, be sitting here with a man that I, I, um, you know, one of my heroes in, in this industry and, you know, you set the standard of how people should be uh, respected and wow. dealt with and how you, you know, you, you you and what you have done in the past, Brother Jay, is like just amazing. And I, you know, I'm just glad to, um, you know, Thank follow you. your path. You're, you're, you're such an amazing man. And, well. And I, you know, I sing your praises as much as I can because you truly deserve it and more. Thank you, Chris. And and I do yours. And, and I just want to say that you're setting a, a, an amazing path yourself, my friend. Really. I, I thank you. Yeah, I learn from the best. Well, thank you, brother. <laughs> All right. Well, I did dabble in it for a little while. So I, I, <laughs> I, I yeah, I'm, it, I'm beating that it, thing to death. Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, hang tight for one minute. I want to thank everybody for watching and, uh, and especially my good dear friend, Chris Hart for being here today. And, um, thanks you guys for hanging in there. Chris, sit tight for a minute, if you would, and I'll, I'll end the live stream, but a big hand to everybody for Chris Hart, oh. <laughs> the man that is Remo. Uh, I wouldn't go that far. Oh, and I just really quickly. So these are some vintage Roto Toms. And a Roto Tom timpani that belonged to my father-in-law, Vic Firth. Uh, I'm lucky to have here in my home drum museum. So Don't anyway. get rid of it, Brother Jake. Hold no, on. No, never. Yeah, look at this. Oh. I can't really reach it. But anyway, it's a it's a very rare timpani Roto Tom and the, uh, and the original uh, chrome Roto Tom. So anyway, Bob Terry. Love you, Brother Bob Terry says, <laughs> two of the best. Thanks for watching, Bob. And, and uh, Tim Kamanchuk, we love you too. All right. Uh, Thanks for watching, everybody. Big hand for Chris Hart, and we'll see you soon.